Of all the diseases that have plagued humanity, very few carry such a heavy stigma as leprosy. Even the word conjures images of the untouchable, the unclean, and those who lose body parts. Though in reality, it is a very different disease. It is an illness that is perhaps not widely understood, yet is widely known about. With myths and prejudice clouding what the disease truly means for those who are affected. Whilst you may believe that the disease is from a bygone medieval age, it still affects around 200,000 people per year. In today's video, we will cover the history of leprosy, how we have sought to combat the disease, and how we have treated those who were affected by such a horrendous illness. Leprosy, also known as Hansen's disease, is an infectious illness that primarily affects a person's skin and the peripheral nervous system. It is caused by the bacteria Mycobacterium leprae. It cannot be spread by casual contact, such as shaking hands or merely sitting near an infected person, nor can it be spread via sexual contact or spread in the utero. Leprosy is mainly spread via airborne droplets, often through coughing or sneezing by someone who is affected by the disease. Infection rates will vary depending on the health of those exposed. Leprosy will tend to only infect those with a poor immune system, those who are malnourished, and those who live in poor conditions. What's more, around 95% of people are naturally immune to leprosy, meaning the disease will never affect most people. Even when infected, the disease is so slow to reproduce that it can take years for symptoms to come to light. It is important to note that whilst we have some idea as to how the disease spreads, we are still not 100% certain. This is because the disease is difficult to grow outside of a living body, making it very difficult to study. It is important to start with the myth that leprosy can cause the loss of limbs, toes or fingers, or that flesh will simply fall away from the body. This is not the case. Leprosy is not a flesh-eating bacterium that will devour a person's body. Rather, the infection damages the skin and nervous system, which will often result in a person losing all sensation in the hands and feet. Often, cuts and damage to the extremities will go unnoticed, leading to infections that if untreated will cause damage. The digits on a person's hand can however be reabsorbed by the body, giving the impression they have fallen off. Corneal ulcers or blindness can also occur if facial nerves are affected due to loss of sensation of the eye. Leprosy often results in lesions on the skin. Other signs of advanced leprosy can also include the loss of eyebrows and nose deformity from damage to the nasal septum. In men, the testicles can also be damaged, resulting in infertility. Leprosy is perhaps one of the oldest illnesses that has affected humanity. There is evidence that leprosy was active in the Indian subcontinent as early as 2000 BCE. Leprosy was identified as a disease as early as 600 BCE, both by Indian and Chinese doctors. It is thought that one of the first vectors for the disease to spread were the armies of Alexander the Great. From his invasion of India in the 4th century BCE. From there, it was spread to North Africa before being picked up by the Roman Empire. As the disease was not widely understood, many ill devised treatments were developed to deal with leprosy. One such treatment involved bathing in the blood of lambs, children, or virgins as a form of purification ritual, as it was believed that the disease was a punishment from God for some sin. Other doctors attempted the use of venoms and poisons to kill the infection, but by far the most horrific solution to leprosy patients was the implementation of leper colonies. At this point, it is perhaps important to note that the term leper is no longer the accepted term for a person suffering with leprosy, due to the treatment and practices of the leper colonies. Such colonies became widespread during the Middle Ages and were used to contain and quarantine leprosy patients, as well as others suffering from a variety of other skin conditions. These colonies would be built in isolated areas away from the rest of the populations and were often run by the church. The goal of the colony would be to separate the affected from the healthy as a means to stop the spread of the disease. 
Leprosy patients would be made to wear clothing that marked them as lepers, and would be made to carry a bell to warn others of their proximity. Many leper or lazar houses were established in England between the 11th and 14th centuries. Often, the patients would beg for food and money in exchange for praying for those who would donate to the religious orders. The stigma of those shunned by the community, combined with the misconceptions about the disease, resulted in the use of such colonies until very recently. One notable example is Kalupapa, a small Hawaiian island that was designated as a leper colony following the enactment of a law that marked patients as little more than criminals. Despite being enacted in the 1960s, the state of Hawaii did not repeal the law until 1969. Even to this day, the island has not been developed. With those who remain on the island, who are well into their 70s and 80s, left unable to reintegrate into society. A link in the description will be available that looks into the consequences of this policy for those who wish to read more. Not all that suffered from leprosy would be outcast. One of the most famous leprosy patients was King Baldwin IV of Jerusalem. As a child, it was clear that he had contracted the illness though was not formally diagnosed as to avoid the stigma. As the only son, his accession was tolerated by the ruling elites. Despite having no feeling in his right arm, Baldwin was able to lead his armies against Saladin and his Saracen forces, successfully defeating them in five engagements and taking part in the fighting himself. In today's world, we now have access to medications and treatment for leprosy, though it is vital that such intervention happens as soon as possible. The telltale sign of numbness or loss of feeling ought to be referred to a doctor as soon as possible. It is then the case of taking a number of antibiotic drugs together, in what is known as a multi-drug treatment, to deal with the bacteria. It is when the illness is left untreated that major damage can be inflicted. The disease is most commonly found in India, Brazil and Indonesia, with more than half of all new cases of leprosy being diagnosed in India. Very often, the stigma of the disease results in people, particularly women and girls, not wishing to disclose their symptoms, for fear of being shunned. As a result, the disease will go untreated and progress to a stage that is debilitating. Whilst the Indian government has developed and distributes a vaccine, it does not offer a full level of protection. The World Health Organization is working to reduce the impact and spread of leprosy with the two key components being to combat the stigma and ensure the early treatment. Early detection and the treatment will result in fewer people developing more debilitating symptoms. In stopping the stigma associated with leprosy, more and more people will be willing to seek help, which will go hand in hand with early detection. Whilst we have come a long way from leper colonies and not understanding the illness, there is still more work to be done. There is no doubt that plenty of you would have held misconceptions about the disease, but it is through better understanding that we can look to remove the stigma, which will set us on the right path to eliminating the disease. The stigma of leprosy has undoubtedly caused a great deal of unnecessary suffering, and whilst it can be somewhat understood when we had little to no idea about the disease, we have today a much better understanding. I would invite you all to look further into the work that has been done to rid the world of the disease and the consequences of shaming those affected. Links will be available in the description for those who wish to look further. <laughs>